This low quality image is the one remnant we have of Jim Henson's final dream Muppet movie. A project that was in the works for nearly 20 years, and yet in Frank Oz's own words, a project very few people know about. A movie set to revitalize the Muppets on the big screen, but one that never saw the light of day. So what was the cheapest Muppet movie, and why didn't we ever see it? In 1979, The Muppets made the jump from television to the big screen with The Muppet Movie. It was a road trip movie that told the approximately true story of how the Muppets got together. It was the first time The Muppets were seen outside of the studio and in the real world, which was seen as a bit of a risk, but it's one that really paid off. It made $65 million on a $25 million budget, and it proved that The Muppets could work in a different format. And when it's making money like that, they're gonna do sequels. That came in the form of The Great Muppet Caper and The Muppets Take Manhattan. Both got increased budgets, but neither saw the success of the first Muppet movie. So in 1985, when the Henson Company considered making another movie, they knew they'd have to reduce the budget. They'd have to make something they jokingly referred to as the cheapest Muppet movie ever made. And with that came an idea. One of the recurring tropes of the Muppets has always been trying to put on some sort of show and it's always leaned into the meta aspect of its own production. The original Muppet movie isn't just about the Muppets getting together, it's about the Muppets watching the movie they've just made about the Muppets getting together. And the cheapest Muppet movie ever made would lean into that sort of thing even more. Now, at this point, the Henson Company had grown so large that Jim couldn't oversee everything. So he started passing more responsibility and more control onto other members of the team. And that would be reflected in the cheapest Muppet movie. The story would start with Kermit, now too busy to direct the next Muppet movie himself, so he would pass responsibility onto Gonzo. Now, Gonzo would have it written into his contract that he would have complete creative control. So he rewrites the movie into a film he calls Into the Jaws of the Demons of Death. The plot was supposed to make no sense. Something would be stolen, there'd be a chase around the world, but Gonzo, with complete creative control, would have blown the entire budget on an impressive opening sequence. There'd be singing and dancing and explosions, but no money for the rest of the film. So as the movie kept going on, it would have to be made with fewer and fewer resources. So what once started as this big globe-trotting adventure, they'd have to keep using the same street corner for different countries. They'd end up having so little money, they'd start filming on 16 millimeter film, then eight millimeter film, then it would just be a slideshow, then storyboards, and finally it would end with Gonzo selling out to corporate sponsors and finish in glorious HD widescreen. But part of the problem of the cheapest Muppet movie ever made is that despite its title, it would be anything but cheap to make. The script had exploding volcanoes, lots of locations, and one gag where Meryl Streep, THE Meryl Streep, would play Miss Piggy's stand-in. But even with those challenges, Jim Henson was really keen to get the movie made. He just had a lot of other projects on as well. In 1984, he released The Dark Crystal, a much darker film than anything with the Muppets in it, and it got reasonably positive reviews and performed well at the box office, but his follow-up film, Labyrinth, was a commercial and critical failure. It lost the Henson Company over $12 million, and Henson took it really hard. The next project, a TV show called The Storyteller, while a critical success was a ratings disaster. His next show, The Jim Hensonar, in 1989, again was really well received by critics, but didn't get audiences, and was cancelled after just one season. With so many projects in the air, and all the financial concerns that come with them, Jim was spending more time worrying about the back end of the company than doing what he loved being creative. So while Jerry Jewell continued working on the script for the cheapest Muppet movie ever made, Jim Henson made a decision that would change the life of the Muppets forever. He offered to sell the Muppets to Disney. This again caused a change of focus for Jim Henson, who began working on Muppet projects for Disney as details of the deal got ironed out. They made a TV special where the Muppets all went on Disney rides, a stage show called Here Come the Muppets, there was Muppet Vision 3D, a whole bunch of other plans for Muppet-themed rides at Disney. But even with all that, Jim was still talking to Jerry Jewell about the cheapest Muppet movie ever made. And once the Disney deal was complete, that would be the next Muppet movie. 
But the Disney deal really complicated things. What was originally supposed to relieve pressure from Jim ended up adding so much more. The lawyers were playing hardball. There was a whole complication about real estate taxes and And then all of it stopped. Because in 1990, Jim Henson died. This was massively unexpected. Jim Henson was only 53 and seemed in relatively good health, but he'd caught a bacteria infection, had declined rapidly, and that was it. Obviously, Jim's death was a huge loss to the world and to the company, and with it, the Disney deal collapsed. The Henson Company would not be sold to Disney. But because certain projects had already gotten so far ahead, a sort of interim deal was cobbled together, which included giving Disney distribution rights to the Muppet films. And Disney CEO Michael Eisner still wanted new Muppet movies. So even after everything that had gone on, after Jim Henson had died and the Disney deal had collapsed, there was still hope for the cheapest Muppet movie ever made. Because it was the last Muppet movie that had a script in development, that's what landed on Michael Eisner's desk. He picked it up and he read it and he didn't like it. He thought it was too much of an inside joke about the film business. He thought people who make movies would get it, but he didn't think that would be something the general public would be interested in. So the cheapest Muppet movie ever made was set aside. They went on to make a Muppet Christmas Carol, Muppet Treasure Island, and moved on. And look, this isn't anything out of the ordinary. Movies get developed and scrapped all of the time. There's loads of unmade Muppet projects. But the story for the cheapest Muppet movie didn't end there. Over a decade later in 2002, Disney did eventually buy the Muppets. And as they went through all the Muppet archives, what did they find the script for? All the files for the cheapest Muppet movie ever made found their way onto the desk of Disney chairman Dick Cook. And he loved it. See, by the time he'd gotten to it, the Muppets had been out of the spotlight for nearly five years. It had been nearly 30 years since the Muppet Show first aired on television. He knew it was going to take something really special to get Muppets front and center again. And he thought the cheapest Muppet movie was the way to do it. So Frank Oz got a call. If you don't know who Frank Oz is, he is one of the original Muppet puppeteers. He does the voice for Miss Piggy, for Fozzie Bear, he also helped co-direct The Muppets Take Manhattan. Alongside Jim Henson and Jerry Jewell, Frank Oz is one of the most important figures behind the scenes of The Muppets. But he'd taken a step away from performing to focus on his directing career. He still came back every now and again to do some Muppet work, but apparently he disliked the direction they were taking throughout the 90s. Although when it came to the cheapest Muppet movie ever made, he was still really fond of the idea. So fond he was convinced to come back to help rewrite the script and direct the movie. But even with that, there was still a lot of problems. The new Disney CEO, Bob Iger, wasn't as fond of the Muppets as Michael Eisner was. And even with nearly 15 years of advancement in technology, the cheapest Muppet movie was still gonna cost a lot of money. Cook was really passionate about the project, but apparently the budget he gave Oz was absolutely tiny. But with hope that costs could be brought down, work continued on the project. Now, meanwhile, in 2006, Jason Segel has a meeting at Disney where he pitches a reboot of The Muppets. It would be in the style of the original movies and work to reintroduce The Muppets to a whole new audience. And because there was a whole generation of people who had grown up without The Muppets, this sort of soft reboot was really more what Disney wanted. Look, you can understand why Disney went in the direction they did, but it's pretty crazy that they had Frank Oz, one of the original Muppeteers, someone who knew the characters better than anyone, who was a distinguished director in his own right, ready and excited to work on the Muppets again. And they just binned it. But that was it. Frank Oz was out and Jason Segel was in. But here's where things get a bit weird. In 2009, Disney had their first D23, a live fan exposition that provides updates about all things Disney, new things with parks, and announcements about new TV shows and movies. And in 2009, it featured The Muppets. They played songs, did a few skits, and also announced the title for their next Muppet film. They showed the title card for the cheapest Muppet movie ever made. Now, that's weird because everything to do with that project had been scrapped. Frank Oz had left and gone on to direct another film, and the Jason Segel film was based on a completely original script. The other weird thing is that there were multiple versions of a script for the cheapest Muppet movie. There are allegedly storyboards, but the only thing we have is this announcement from D23. So why did they announce it? Maybe they thought the title could work even with a new script? 
maybe they didn't have any other title. Maybe an executive thought it would be easier to fund if it sounded cheap. But it was really this announcement that put the cheapest Muppet movie ever made to bed. The film would then be retitled The Greatest Muppet Movie Ever Made, and then finally just The Muppets. And even though Frank Oz was keen to work on Muppet material, he did not return to perform any of his character for the Muppet movie. So in 2011, the Jason Segel Muppet film was the one that made it to screens. And it was both a critical and commercial success, making $165 million. But Frank Oz later came out against the film saying he didn't like the script and didn't think that they respected the characters. And even though I feel generally positive about the Segel Muppet film, you can understand why Frank Oz feels the way he does. These were characters that he had helped create and define. And he'd been working on his own project for years. A fairly safe Muppet reboot wasn't in the spirit of what he'd designed. Oz hasn't been asked back to perform any of the Muppets in years. So it seems unlikely that we'll ever get to see the cheapest Muppet movie ever made. The most recent info we have is from a Reddit AMA from Frank Oz who said, I love it and I wish it could be made, but maybe it's time now is gone because it feels like Disney would like to go their own way. And that's the unfortunate end of the cheapest Muppet movie ever made. What do you think of it? Do you think it's something they should try and bring back and resurrect? Or is it something better left in the past? Let me know in the comments. For more information on the cheapest Muppet movie ever made, please check out this article by Jim Hill Media. There's so little info out there about the cheapest Muppet movie and this is where I got a vast majority of it from. He also has a really interesting article from 2004 whenever Disney did eventually buy the Muppets and it has info from Disney insiders about how they view the Muppets at the time of the deal. It's really interesting. I've linked both of these down below. If you made it this far, thanks for watching and if you want to see more, subscribe.